Hi everyone! I'm the Balloting Bard, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at a character who's barely known, yet is probably one of the most tragic and important people to come out of Ishgard. He was a Knight of the Heavens Ward, and would probably have been one of the Warrior of Light's allies had he not become a victim of Thordan's schemes. We're going to learn about who the real Servandro was, and how his murder influenced the blasphemy of Ishgard in the final days. As always, please note that this video will contain spoilers from Heaven's Ward and the Magical Role DPS quests from the Endwalker expansion. It'll also contain major spoilers from the Lodestone side story entitled What Remains of a Night. When we first meet the Heaven's Ward of Ishgard, we're introduced to a holy order of knights who live to serve and protect the Archbishop of the Ishgardian Orthodox Church, in this case, Thordon VII. We see the knights as sneaky, deceptive, and not really practicing what they preach. And as the events of the Heavensward expansion transpires, we see them do some pretty awful things, like defending Thordon's lie on how the Dragonsong War really began, performing summons to gain more power, or impaling everyone's favorite Elizan Orshifant, making folks who didn't hate the Heavensward at the beginning make them really loathe them at the end. But in the Lodestone story, What Remains of a Knight, set a few years before the events of Heaven's Ward, we get the background of a member of the Order who we've only heard about here or there in Ishgard, or better yet, the Firmament. This knight was one of the older members of the Heaven's Ward named Servandro de Rochemond, and the side story mentions that despite being a loyal knight and serving for over 40 years, he started to have doubts that Thornton was the good and honest clergyman he painted himself to be. While Vandra was standing guard at the vault, he overheard Thornton having a quiet conversation. At first, Vandro thought it was just prayer, but after hearing a different voice answer, he decided to get closer to see what was going on. What he found was Thornton communicating with a paragon in black robes, more than likely La Habrea, one of the three unsundered Asians. Vandro said nothing to Thornton at this moment, but the story switches viewpoints to an inquisitor named Sharaber. We recognize him as a future member of the Heaven's Ward, one who the warrior fights in the vault. He's given a letter by a confused apprentice, who honestly looks like the Inquisitor we see from the Hildebrand quests. And this man states the letter was given to him by a man in black robes. Sharaber reads the letter and smiles, knowing he has a new assignment. Once again, the story shifts viewpoints, and we see Vandro feeling conflicted about his service to the Archbishop. He mentions overhearing Thornton and the Paragon discussing summoning rituals, calling on someone or something outside of their faith, breaking church law. Vandro makes his way to the vault where Thornton's home lies, and as he's about to confront Thornton, he's interrupted by Sharaber, where the Inquisitor reveals that he received word of a heretic about to arrive. Vandro realizes that this is Thornton's way of wanting him dead, and the two battle, leaving the end a mystery aside from the stones left scarred by Sharaber's fire attacks. The next day, Thornton comes out and says to a few of the knights that Vandro visited him the night before about wanting to retire, adding that the man was now sleeping in the antechamber of the vault and shouldn't be disturbed. An official announcement follows a few days later, with Sir Zephyrin being named as Vandro's replacement. Vandro, of course, wasn't present at the retirement announcement, with Thornton adding that the knight couldn't be there because he begged to go on a pilgrimage instead. This story, of course, doesn't give explicit detail on what really happened to Sir Vandro, but it's heavily implied that he was killed at Thornton and the Assian's behest. And so that leaves us with the magical DPS role quests. Here we see a leader in the Ishgardian church, Bishop Vartinwa, attempting to summon Archbishop Thornton and bring him back. The summoning, however, lacks enough ether, and instead the body of a slain man has now become a vessel of old memories from the Heaven's Ward. We see the clone looking a lot like Sir Zephyrin, Vandro's replacement, and he's quickly abandoned by Vartinwa and his lackeys, leaving him for dead. The clone stumbles back to Ishgard and finds himself in the infirmary, where he's asked about his identity. He settles upon a name that's familiar, Vandro. Feeling despair over Thordon's demise and the Heaven's Ward being presumed dead, the new Vandro becomes a blasphemy, taking a dragon form and soaring above the skies of Ishgard. 
As Emmerich, Artoirel, and the Warrior of Light hunt down the blasphemy and try to save the clergy from despair and turning into monsters themselves, Artoirel mentions the clone's confusion about his identity. Emmerich supposes the clone is like a primal, retaining the former memories of Thornton and the Heavensward Knights, including Vandro. Could it be the predominating despair from the primal, however, was from the real Vandro's memories? especially since he never got closure when trying to confront Thornton, and his implied murder went unnoticed. And to see these memories take the physical form of Zephyrin, Vandro's replacement, could show his despair even more. Vandro spent his life serving Thornton, looking up to the man as the epitome of righteousness, only to find out it was a lie. Vandro died distraught, his own identity as a knight of the heavens ward in question, and he probably wondered if his service to the archbishop had really been worth it. Vandro tried to do the right thing by confronting Thornton, but was removed and replaced by a young knight who wouldn't question the archbishop's orders. Though Vandro's murderers did eventually come to justice, he didn't get the chance to come to terms with being disappointed in the man he served. Despite being remembered fondly by the people of Ishgard, Vandro's true sacrifice remained unknown, and the despair that he probably died with came back in the form of a blasphemy. It's a tragic tale when you really think about it. Yet another sad story of an Ishgardian who died for a lie. When we see Emmerich, Artoirel, and the Warrior of Light deal with the blasphemy, we see Vandro's despair echo that of the clergy of the Ishgardian church. They were lied to by Thornton, and in turn lied to the people. Now rejected, they probably began to question their faith and service. Was it worth it? Was there any way of bouncing back after seeing their faith shattered? And yet, as we see with Clem, the young clergyman who believed in the church and the good they could do for the future, we see the hope that goes against that despair. The comfort that he was willing to give to the hurting, and a faith that hung on to his God and not man. It's never easy seeing your heroes fall. It shatters the soul when the faith you held on to so fervently reveals ugly truths about people. Vandro may have been the first to stand up to Thornton and his hypocritical ideas, but he wasn't the last. Others followed in his footsteps, some who died like Orshafant and Isael, others who lived to see the church change and reform for the better, like Clem, Emmerich, and Artoirel. And though Vandro's true end may never be known to the people of Ishgard, it's comforting to see that though his physical body perished, his ideals and the desire to serve truth lived on. Maybe not in the Knights of the Heavens Ward, but in the church and people he served. And there you have it, an honorable knight who was gone but not forgotten, and whose legacy lived on in the people who followed. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and if you're interested in more content, be sure to subscribe. I'm the Balloting Bard, and I'd like to thank you for joining. See you next time, and have a great day. Baby.